Good morning, it's Thanksgiving Day, November 26th, and I have two and six here. They are so ready for a big Thanksgiving dinner. Two is in the tens, making 20, and six is in the ones, and they are very, very, very happy together to make 26th. And today is Thanksgiving, which is a holiday, national holiday in the United States. And it's the feast holiday. Everybody is eating, eating, eating today. After maybe watching the Macy's um, parade on TV only, only this year because of COVID. But it's a wonderful thing to watch. And they've been watching with me. And now we're going to tell you a few little Thanksgiving stories. So we're doing it inside today. Uh, in our house. So I'm going to take off my mask because I'm sitting in front of my fireplace and two and six will do the same. You know, what is two and six? 26. How does that relate to some other numbers? Well, 26 is even, not because two's over here is not why it's even. It does have to do with the units. Six is an even number. So 26 is an even number. It depends on what's in the ones, the units. Okay. So they're going to sit over and watch, and we're going to tell a few things about Thanksgiving because it's all about food. This is a little corn doll made out of corn stalks. You see, if you ever go get the corn and you pull the stalks off, this is how people dry them and make them into, into little uh, sculptures. So here she is with her pumpkin. And let's do something. What's underneath here? Look at all these little paper pumpkins. Let's count the pumpkins. All right, you guys, you watch over, make sure I do it right. Now we have to decide what are we gonna do? They're different sizes, so we can put them out by size. Here's some that are kind of this size. And then there's a bunch of little tiny ones. So look at these. So we have two big ones. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, how can we put them in an array without any leftovers? So we could put them in fours, right? So we could have two groups of four, and that uh, says that that's equal to eight. There are eight pumpkins. It's two groups of, of four each or four groups of two each. So if you have two friends, each would get four. That's the division question. If you have uh, four friends, each would get two. That's another division question. Okay, let's take down the mask so you can hear me more. Now look at all these little itty bitty ones. Look at here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now we have them in a three by three array, three by three. This is an array which remember we show them that three is the square root of nine or nine is the square of three. So let's add some more, 10, 11, 12. I'm doing them in groups of threes as if I have three friends to divide my pumpkins by. And then we have another one, one, two, three, and another group of three. Aha, so how many do we have? This is a group of three by one, two, three, four, five, six. That should give me 18 small pumpkins. Now notice they're not all exactly the same size. This one's a little bit bigger. So if you wanted, if you really liked pumpkins and you said I have 18, you might want to take the bigger one or maybe you like the little smaller one or the one that doesn't seem to even have a stem. Sometimes they lose their stem. Oh, here's the stem, I see it, it came out. All right, so we have 18 little pumpkins. We have eight middle-sized pumpkins and two very large pumpkins. If we don't care about size, and we're only talking about the paper ones because we have some glass ones here. So that is three, one, two, three, four, that's 18, 19, 20. We have 28 different pumpkins. Two more than today. So if we took the big ones away, we have 26 pumpkins left. So that's the subtraction question. So 26 pumpkins for 26. And if we add the two big ones back, we now have 28 pumpkins. So we can subtract two. Be careful the word take away, parents, because take away might mean I take them away and I have two. So it's no. We remove two from the cluster. How many are left? There are now 26. So be careful how you actually say that. Our lingo can get in the way of the learner's understanding. All right, let's move all of those back up here. And let's talk about some other things that happen on Thanksgiving dinner. In fact, I wrote, I have a poem here and I have the card. Here's the card that all the numbers and pi 
are sitting around their table and they say, count your blessings. Now, this is a card. It shows all the numbers. They're sitting there in front of the table. It's a family. So they are sitting around the table. They're trying to social distance as much as they can. And pie, of course, brings a pie there. And zero, I think, has a, has a plate of food. And, who, and number nine, I think, has a set, a plate of peas. She's bringing peas to the table. And look at all the other food that's in the middle. One of the things I want to talk about is the turkey now. Because the turkey is a, if you are in a house and someone's baking a turkey or roasting a turkey or putting it in uh, some kind of barbecue or any kind of way to cook it, you need to be very careful about that it has to be cooked and finished and that it's, it's not raw anymore. So that's where you use a thermometer. This is a cooking thermometer. And this is a good thing to learn about uh, numbers in the kitchen. So you need to know about the thermometer. The inside needs to be a certain temperature to be well cooked. And you see there are temperatures in there. Of course, we're in the United States, we use Fahrenheit. Everybody else in the world uses Celsius, uh, which actually makes everything much easier because all of the base 10 kinds of numbers and centimeters are all based on 10 or 100. So the, but we have the temperatures and it says on it, uh, smoked ham is 130 and poultry needs to go up to 180. So turkey is a kind of poultry. And on the, the, this thermometer, you stick it in the turkey and up in the, the breast meat, the white meat, and you wait to see until it actually reaches that temperature. Then you know it's okay to eat. But it sometimes takes a long time and everybody's hungry because the turkey isn't done. That's a classic issue that happens on Thanksgiving Day. Now I have two other things here that I want to talk to you a little bit about. You may have lots of different things that you're eating on the table with sides. This one is known as an acorn squash. It's beautiful and these are so fun. I baked these yesterday and I just bake it in the oven. I bake it at 375 degrees for about a half an hour to 45 minutes. It depends on how big the acorn squash is, but you bake it upside down is an easy way to do it so the inside doesn't doesn't burn, but you need to get the skin soft. The trickiest part of the acorn squash or a spaghetti squash, any of those, is getting them opened up. And sage is a very common flavor for Thanksgiving. This is a sage leaf from my plants in the garden, uh, and I just put a little bit of that flavoring on it with a little olive oil and pepper and, and parsley, and it's absolutely delicious. This is another very colorful, this is a yam or sweet potato, and I always get them mixed up myself. I think this one's actually a sweet potato because it's more rounded, but they are both very good. All of these, the, both of these, this the acorn squash and the yam or sweet potato is full of a lot of beta carotenes. That's what gives it the color, and that's what's really, really, really good for you. Now, you know, a lot of stores now have sweet potato fries, they would be using these to make the sweet potatoes. They have more flavor than a regular white potato, but if you're if you're a uh, person who really loves regular potato fries, you may not like these. I tend to like these with the flavor a little more, but they're not as available all the time. But sweet potatoes and regular potatoes take a long time to cook, and that's one of the very interesting things about how cooking in a microwave does and doesn't work. If you put too many things in the microwave, it's going to extend the time, which may not happen in a regular oven. So we'll talk a little bit more about issues in cooking and the numbers of cooking at some other time. But being food is today, these are two, two kinds of uh, uh, vegetables that you could have as sides that you may or may not have. Some people sweeten these up with marshmallows. No, this is just the plain sweet potato as it is with the skin and it's very good for you, not made as sweet, but made as a, as a savory and the acorn squash has a lot of flavor. Let me then end with a little poem. Thanksgiving can be a numbers holiday. Thanksgiving day is finally here, a time for family and food. The holiday where you count your blessings and show your gratitude. A roasted turkey takes center stage and glazed carrots round out the meal. So take this chance to teach your kids the math behind each peel. And on all of these, there's peeling that's done on carrots. There's the skin. I like the skin. You can peel that on the potato and put it in foil, although I like to eat 
the skin, which is the best part for the nutrients. As a matter of fact, you do not eat the peel of the acorn squash. At least I don't know anybody that does, but you do scoop it out and um, you have a wonderful side dish. And these are very, very fine fall dishes and vegetables. All right, this is the numbers lady. Here's all our pumpkins and our fall things and we get ready. Then at the end, as the Macy's Day Parade ends with Santa Claus coming in, we get ready then for the holiday season all over. But we don't wanna forget that this is the day where we give thanks, we count our blessings and we have to stay away from people and social distance, which makes it a very unusual one. I'm gonna be on a Zoom Thanksgiving session tonight with people because that's the way we can get together. Bye-bye. This is the Numbers Lady and it's the 26th of November. Everybody's happy. The whole crew will get together for our Thanksgiving dinner later today.